Good morning and welcome to the Grace Talk radio broadcast. I am Gloria Godson. Thank you for joining us. 2021 is my year of manifestation and enlargement. I proclaim the same over you and your family. Today, we are beginning a new series titled The Lies We Believe. In November 2017, Kate McClure of Florence, New Jersey, was driving into Philadelphia and she ran out of gas on I-95 at about 11 p.m. A homeless man named Johnny came up to her car. He told her that it wasn't safe for her to leave her car at that time of night. And without asking her for anything, he went and bought gas for her with his last $20. Kate was deeply touched by his kindness. She later repaid him for the gas, gave him some clothes and money. But wanting to do more, she set up a GoFundMe account for him. Her goal was to raise $10,000 to help him get back on his feet. Well, the story grabbed national attention and Johnny's kindness drew donations from over 14,000 people and they raised a whopping $402,000. What a great American story. It sounds like the story of the Good Samaritan in the Bible, but the problem is it's all a lie. There is indeed a homeless man named Johnny, but the story about his kindness was a made up feel good story to get people to donate money. And what is really sad is that Johnny was in on the scam too. So Kate, her boyfriend and Johnny were arrested and charged with crimes for duping GoFundMe donors. Stories like this make us cringe. But the truth is that we are living in an age of lies and deception, and we need to have discernment. The question is, what lies have you believed? Deception is a prominent feature in all the biblical prophecies about the last days. Jesus warned us about this in Matthew 24. His disciples asked him, what sign will signal your return and the end of the world? And in verses 24 and 25, Jesus said, there will be imposters falsely claiming to be the Christ and prophets of lies will arise to lead many astray. All around us today, there are prophets of lies. Prophets of lies in the media, the government, in politics, in the academia, in arts and entertainment, in the family, in business, and even in the church. We are living in an age of fake news, misrepresentation, and massive misinformation. Every day we are bombarded with lies about what family is, the role of government, about God and his word, and about right and wrong. We have movies, music, and video games that glorify evil and immorality. We have churches and so-called ministers who do not believe the word of God and social media platforms that have become censor stations that stifle truth and dispense lies. Lies and deception are certainly confirmation that we are indeed living in the last days. But their prevalence today is also a clear indication that we are in spiritual warfare and that it is getting intensified. In fact, lies, deception, and propaganda are strategic weapons of modern warfare. Nazi Germany used them a lot, but they are not alone. The Allies won World War II largely because of the clever lies of a British double agent who spun a web of lies to convince the Germans that the Allies' invasion at Normandy, the world's largest invasion, was only a ruse, and that the real invasion was at Calais in France. 
the Germans believed the lie and they were unprepared for the invasion, which paved the way for allied victory. The Bible confirms that deception is an instrument of war. In 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 6, we see how King Ahab was seduced by 400 false prophets to go to war against Ramoth Gilead. He asked them, should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead? And they all replied, yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give you victory. But unfortunately, all 400 prophets were infected with a lying spirit whose assignment was to inspire all of those prophets to speak lies to Ahab so that they can entice him to go to war and be killed. God's true prophet named Micaiah had spiritual insight about this and he warned Ahab, but Ahab did not listen to him. Ahab believed the lie of his 400 false prophets. He went to war against Ramoth Gilead and he was in fact killed. Today, you and I are at war. In Ephesians chapter six, the Bible warns us that we are in mortal combat, but our fight is not against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The question is, how can we prepare? And what are the strategies to win this war? Strategy number one is know your enemy. One of the key strategies for winning any war is to know your enemy. The Bible tells us clearly who our enemy is. First, human beings are not our enemies. Your enemy is not your spouse, your brother, sister, boss, that person in the other political party, or that person that cut you off in traffic. Your enemy is the devil, and he has a threefold assignment to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Number two, a key strategy of the devil for achieving his evil objectives are lies and deception. He has never stood for the truth, and he is a master liar. In fact, Jesus himself said that the devil is full of nothing but lies and that lying is his native tongue. Our enemy, the devil, is a master of deception and the father of lies. Everything coming out of the devil's mouth is a lie. The Bible tells us that in John chapter 8, verse 44. Our enemy is a master of masquerades, disguises, and charades. He is a chameleon. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 tells us that Satan transforms himself to appear as an angel of light. And his agents also go about pretending to be ministers of righteousness. This means that the devil never comes to you dressed in a red suit with a pitchfork and pointy ears. He comes looking like the best things and the best people you want desire, pray for, and trust. Number four, the devil knows the Bible better than most Christians and quotes it regularly. In fact, Bible verses are one of his primary tools of choice for tempting Christians. So strategy number one is to know your enemy. Strategy number two is to know your enemy's strategy. What is the devil's strategy? The devil lost his position in heaven because he rebelled against God's authority. Since then, he has set out to prove that human beings, if given the chance, would abandon God's rule just like he did. He wants to justify his sin and rebellion, and he wants to use human, human beings like you and I to prove his point. And lies and deception are a major tool in his toolbox. 
Number two, sin is based on deception or rebellion. Every time you choose to sin, you have either been deceived by the devil or willfully chosen to disobey God. In Genesis, Eve was deceived, but Adam sinned with his eyes wide open. Number three, the devil is a master at corruption, half-truths, and hoodwinks. What do I mean by that? If you get a bucket full of truth and add a drop of a lie, it is no longer truth. It has been corrupted. And this is what the devil does. He knows that he cannot come out right and tempt a strong Christian with a humongous lie. You will spot it right away. So he comes with truth that has been corrupted and compromised. It's like the story of the frog that was put in boiling water and it immediately jumped out. But then they put it in cold water and slowly heated the water and the frog did not realize it until it was cooked. This is how Eve was deceived by the devil. The devil came to her and said, did God really say that you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? He knowingly misquoted the word of God. That was his hook to attract Eve to engage with him. And when she did, he sprung his big lie. He said, you won't die. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will become like God, knowing both good and evil. You see, if this was only a half truth. Yes, they would know good and evil, but they would not become like God. They would become like the devil. The truth is they were already like God because they were made in the image of God. It's the same thing that he did with Jesus. He took Jesus to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. Because the Bible has said that God, God will order his angels to protect you and they would hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Here again, he twisted the intent and meaning of the word of God. Yes, Psalm 91 tells of God's faithful love and protection over us wherever we go. But God did not promise to protect us when we, out of pride or self-promotion, deliberately put ourselves in harm's way to test God. So what was the devil's lie? His lie was that God will suspend gravity to protect you when you show off in sinful pride or when you put God to the test. Jesus knew the devil's corruption of the word of God and refused to believe the lie. He said to the devil, you must not tempt the Lord your God. Number four, the devil's bags of tricks is limited. Apostle John tells us that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Did you get that? This is all that is in the world, nothing more. The devil's entire bag of tricks consists of the flesh, the eyes, and the pride. It's what he tempted the first Adam with, and it's what he tempted Jesus, the last Adam, with. And it's what he tempts us with even today. So be on the alert and do not fall for the devil's ploy. Do not believe his lie. Strategy number three to win this war is to know the truth. The best strategy to identify the devil's lies is knowledge of the truth. Jesus said to us, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Please keep in mind that Jesus did not say that the truth would make you free. I have seen many Christians treat the Bible like a good luck charm. They put it under their pillows at night to ward off evil spirits. But that is a misunderstanding. It is not just 
any truth in the Bible that will set you free. It is only the truth that you know that will set you free. Jesus taught us that the word of God is seed, but our hearts are the soil. We must take the word of God and plant it in the soil of our hearts. It is only the engrafted word that has the power to save our souls and to set us free. Hosea chapter four, verse six puts it this way. My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Several years ago, my daughter and I went on a tour of the US Bureau of Engraving and Printing in Washington, DC to see how money is made. We watched a documentary on how agents from the US Treasury and the FBI are able to identify counterfeit currency. They spend so much time studying the features, details, and markings on the real dollar bills such that they can spot a phony a mile away. This is the same thing with us. The best way to defend against the devil's lies is to know the truth of the word of God and to know it very well. There is a massive perversion of truth in our time. Even the word truth itself has been corrupted. Today, truth, absolute truth, is widely rejected for relative morality. Often you hear people say of my truth, your truth, and so on. See, that is a lie and a strategy to confuse. There is individualized truth, but there are no individual truths. The Holy Spirit can take the word of God and custom fit it for you in your situation. That is who he is and what he does. But there are no individual truths. You cannot make up your own truth. The word of God is the truth. And the truth is a person. His name is Jesus. In addition, words have been twisted. The words truth and justice have been twisted to support things that are anything but just and true. For example, the term reproductive justice has been used to describe abortion. And you are left wondering, what about justice for the defenseless baby? Also, truth is confused with facts and facts are mislabeled as truth. I'll give you an example. The fact that you may be feeling sick right now, but the truth is, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you were healed. My goal is not to overlook the facts or to pretend that they do not exist. My point is to let you know that the facts or your feelings or your symptoms are not the truth. The word of God is the truth. Facts change, symptoms disappear, but truth is eternal. Regardless of what the facts are, we have an alternate view of reality based on our covenant relationship with Almighty God and based on the character of our Heavenly Father. So if you are feeling sick, my goal is not to pretend that you are not sick or to deny your symptoms. My goal is to highlight the truth that we have a covenant of divine health bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. That truth transcends and trumps all the facts. The question is, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the lie, the facts, or the truth of the word of God? The sad thing is that the lies you believe become your reality. This is why the devil has used this strategy of lies to limit so many Christians and to rob them of their identity and inheritance in God. The children's book, The Elephant and the Rope, tells the story of huge elephants at a circus tied to a stake with a small rope. The elephants could break free at any time, but they don't even try. Why? Because when they were very young and small, the same size rope 
was used to tie them. And at that time, it was enough to hold them. As they grew up, they became conditioned to believe the lie that they could not break away. So they never even try. That is the sad reality with so many Christians. And that is the power of believing a lie. The question is, whose responsibility is it to protect you from deception? It is your responsibility to protect yourself from deception. Jesus said to us, do not let or do not allow yourself to be deceived. This means that we are the gatekeepers. We are out of time today, but we will continue with this discussion uh, on next week's broadcast. In the meantime, stay in the word of God and do not believe the lies of the devil. Now, if you have not given your life to Christ, I encourage you to do that right now. Please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you pray that prayer, or if you need encouragement, Christian counseling, or resources to help you grow in Christ, please go to our website, www.gloriagodson.com. Our study today is from my new book, I Am the God Kind. You can pre-order on my website, www.gloriagodson.com. Thank you for tuning in today. And may the Lord God bless you.